Knicks looking for nine in a row at MSG matinee game against the Raptors. Playoff implications abound. And Julius would start this thing off hot, man. They had no answer for Julius. He was in his Carmelo bag all night long on his way to another 30-point game. Knicks had a good time at this, man, until the third quarter when things started to get tight. Untimely Nick turnovers. Van Fleet and the Raptors got hot and ultimately would take a one-point lead in the third quarter. But the fourth quarter was all about the bench mob and R.J. Barrett. Derrick Rose and my guy Obi with three threes to break this thing open. Knicks took a five point fourth quarter lead and going a 14 and three run. And that's essentially all they needed to put this team away, man. Seven games over 500, nine in a row. New York Knicks win 120 to 103. Win the season series. Oh man, celebrations abound. Oh man, nine in a row, man. Nine it was just feeling row. good. You know, like Julius said, there was no defense in that first yeah, half. Yeah. But as we've been doing, we locked up in the second half. I'm just hyped up, man. I, I'm not ready to get technical on who did what. What did I, we won nine in a row? Sink, let feeling that good. sink in, bro. I'm let saying, that bro. Sink in, man. Oh man, sidelines dancing. You know, Obi's out there making shots. Like, I'm just, I'm just loving the whole production from everybody out there on a fine Saturday morning. That's how you start a weekend. That's how you enjoy yeah. a weekend. Now we can just have this one, start the new week, hoping to continue the streak. We won all the important games. These playoff teams that we're supposed to be that that we're looking at. You know, we're this team is trying to get in there, trying to get the play in. We said no. Toronto is a wild card. Yeah. You know, you that game can just can go either way because although their record will say otherwise. Yeah. Um, they're a good team. They have they have a good roster of guys who are good at shooting. Got to respect them. You have yep. to respect them. You have champions on that team, so it's a wild card. And the Knicks did not let that get to them. This is a team that we tend to struggle with when it comes to shooting the three ball. That was not happening. <laughs> yeah. It was raining threes early in the first quarter. I mean, the forecast said it was sunny, but in the garden it was pouring. Everybody got involved <laughs> again. This is what we talk about, continuity, complementary yeah. basketball. Of course, the captain of the MSG Express, Julius Randle, 31, <laughs> Reggie with 16, R.J. Barrett, my nine guy with 25, yeah. Derrick Rose turning back the clock with mm. 19. I mean, even when they the when Toronto was able to go on a slight run, we didn't let that get yeah. into our heads. And also, this game came down to, again, because Toronto has shooters, this came down to who can get more stops. And yeah. the Knicks and that top five defense, you can't outstop us. We're going to get you every time. Three minutes, 56 seconds left in the third. The Knicks were down by one. Raptors had came right back into it. Knicks third quarter of doom loom large. You know, led by Peyton, stumbling, bumbling around with turnovers. RJ mm. had a couple as well. But Nerlens Noel had a block shot. And that, to me, really turned the whole game around. Even though they were down by one in that third quarter, they would end up finishing the quarter up five. And then, you know, the second unit with RJ, D. Rose, RJ, IQ, OB, oh, and Taj. I, I like that I unit. I want to see them get some more time together, yes. especially with, yes. with Burks out. Mm -hmm. That unit, 14-3 run. And that was the game. The backup four minutes are critical right now, especially at this stage in the season. We wanted we, the spotlight is on Obi, and I thought once again he had another solid outing uh, defensively, offensively, three three pointers, and then getting a couple of timely boards. Man, plus ten on the night for Obi, three for four from downtown. Uh, just a solid effort from the second unit, really picking things up for Julius. He really didn't have to put in much work in the fourth. You know what I loved about RJ's game, CK, was that he, he still finished with 25 points, 50% from the field. But in the second half, he was getting to the free throw line. Man. He got more aggressive and trying to get buckets. He got went 6-7 from the free throw line, chipped in with 12 boards. And I thought that was the biggest turnaround for RJ's game in the second, quarter, in the second half that really helped us lock the win away.
His defense yeah. today, I mean, like I said, nobody was playing defense in that first half. Right. But that second half, defensively, you saw just like everyone else on the team locking in. But R.J. Barrett was in the grill of everybody from Trent to a few possessions with Siakam. Yeah. Like, R.J. was in there defensively, and then that just led, like you said, to the offense where the aggression carried over. He was head down straight to the rim and getting those foul calls. Big Finally, time. referees, we appreciate you. Giving some respect yeah. to the nine god Broadway Barrett for sure, but yeah, RJ Barrett just as he's been doing in this stretch of games, hell, this whole entire season, mm -hmm. you see he's a different player in that second half. You see him calm down. You see him play his game and let the game come to him and never force the issue yep. in any scenario. And there's a few possessions there, like you mentioned with Alfred Payton in that third quarter where he just was not playing too well. And then Nightmare. when RJ Nightmare Barrett quarter. got the ball, you can see him bring the, the bring the um the pace back, bring yeah. the mm -hmm. the temperament back to the team yeah. before. Um, Alfred Payne was ultimately subbed out. So I, I, I this dude is 20 years old. I, years I feel old. like we need to make sure we mention this every yeah. single show. Yeah. We have to mention this every single 20 years old, and for him to have that kind of IQ, that kind of uh, veteran presence for a 20-year-old already. Time. To see RJ finally in, yeah. have his moment in the sun, if you will, and be start to become that player that I've always known he could be, and I'm sure a lot of other people have always known he could be, and getting the love that yep. he probably desperately wanted last season. He just didn't get because he didn't earn it. And now seeing him and hearing those RJ chants, it just, it warms my heart. And not only as a fan, but as a fan of RJ, because yeah, this is time. only the beginning for him. He's big only time. shown a small percentage of the player that he's going to be. Yeah. And we're going to be hearing RJ chants in the garden for a very long time. time. Nick's now 18 and seven when D Rose is in the lineup. Uh, as I said, the most important point guard on this team when Peyton was stumbling and bumbling in that third, I'm just <laughs> waiting for them to buy time, CK. I'm like, all right, just hold it, hold the foot, hold this lead, you know, just keep it sustainable until D Rose can come in and close the show. Thankfully, we did. Um, D Rose, once again, man, just, just being the floor general that we desperately needed. Started the game off uh, hot, ended the game hot, seven to 10 from the field, five or six from the free throw line, seven dimes. Two mm -hmm. steals, finished with 19 points. Got Obi in transition for that critical three-pointer on that 14-3 run. This is our point guard, man. 19-7 and seven for D. Rose. And, you know, it, it picks everybody else up. We know his impact on Obi. Quickly again chipped him two for four for downtown with six points. Uh, plus 10 for, for quickly. Plus 26 for D. Rose. Plus 12 mm -hmm. for, for Taj and, and Ash. You know, we had Meta on the show in, in the Meta interview. I just dropped that clip yesterday when Meta talked about the impact of the veterans like a D. Rose and a Taj. Yeah. And he said, he said, you know, at this stage in the season, you, you want those guys to have an impact on the younger guys, right? So that when, when they smell blood, they know they got to go out and take it. And I feel like you, you kind of see that demeanor in IQ. You see it with, with Obi, even with RJ when he's out there with D. Rose. Everybody's just lifting their game up, man. They know what time it is. They know they're trying to put push for a good seed to finish it well and these guys are locked in just mind-boggling that as knicks fans we know we still have pieces that we want to add to this team we we're not a complete team but yeah. to see what tibbs is able to do with what we do have and how what we do have has the hunger and drive to make it work in the moment not even guys thinking hungry, about man. the future this it's just inspiring because when you get the pieces that you need this team, you think everyone's trying to get on the bandwagon now? Just wait. Yeah, I'm it's already you, packed just up. Just wait. It, it, Julius Randle's doing everything that he needs to do to shut everybody the hell up. That's that's what I'm seeing. Like Julius yeah. Randle's like, look, I heard everything y'all said last year. I'm making sure y'all understand that. Yes, this is me. I'm showing my new game, and I'm here to stay. And in no way, shape, or form was it even forced. This was Julius Randle playing with his game. Like you just mentioned, he was he was a, he was the reason for 16 threes, yeah. and this man was five for seven of his own. Yeah. Five three points of seven. This man was 29% last season. You know what I mean? Julius yeah. Randle is just, this is who he is. And we're at the point of the season where we were about a month left, maybe less than a month left of the season before we go into the playoffs. And Julius Randle has been this way the entire season. This is who he is. And he's continuing to play better and better yeah. and only uh, outdo himself. It, he, he's, he's just in his, his offensive repertoire this year has just been ridiculous. In and like I said, bag. no being Siakam, but no slouch on the defensive end, man. That Raptors defense can get tough, you know, yeah. and, and Julius did a good job against the zone. They sent two, three guys at him at times trying, trying to mm -hmm. pressure him. And I thought, you know, he's most, for the most part on the, on, on the composure. They still have four turnovers. It is what it is. When you got the ball in your hands that much, it happens. But mm -hmm. by and large, um, just making the right play. 
you know, making the right play for his guys. And, and Julius has is, is just turned up. Tell you when I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I speak for most true Knicks fans when I say this. I love the fact that we actually have a team that we can rally around, that we can enjoy watching. Because I remember watching when we were 17 and 65, we had Lou Amundsen, Alexi Shred. Oof. Uh, Lance Thomas, Langston Galloway, <laughs> and me and my baby brother, we watched every single one of those 82 games mm. of that season. Yeah, that's how dedicated that we were, that we are to the Knicks. And the fact that we have a team that's this good right now, yo, I'm loving it. Listen, I don't know what's happening right now. Okay, like you ever see the movie Shawshank Redemption? Of course. And like yes. you know the guy Brooks, the guy, the guy Brooks, the older guy, like finally gets out of prison. And you would, like, think you'd be, he'd be, like, super happy, but, like, he just can't adjust to regular life because he's been in jail for so long. Like, yeah. I'm having a difficult time adjusting <laughs> to a Knicks winning team right now. So, like, <laughs> I, I, I'm just so used to, like, losing. Like, I usually call in the show, and I should be ranting about somebody and yelling and screaming about this something. This is a new life. What and, is like, this life? I, I don't know. I, I, I think this. I'm just outside of my comfort zone with this winning Knicks team. Like I, I just, I, I just don't understand what's happening. The two things that, like the two things that are obvious is that Randall's balling out, taking it to another level, and Tibbs obviously yeah. bringing his culture. But the two things that I think are, are really putting us over the top on this winning streak, is, see, like the the bench, like Theo Pinson yeah, and yeah. the bench with the energy they bring. It's like I can't, I can't overstate it enough. Like you know, at first, like. I was a big ISO Zo fan, and, like, I still think he should be in the league. But, like, extend Theo Pinson, man. He's got the whole bench. Hey, Reggie like, Bullock was, was campaigning like, for him. Bullock wants him on. Yeah, like, you know, they love him. They love Pinson, yeah, bro. Yeah, he, he's on the sideline. It's like playing. He's, like, playing defense six on five, telling people where the screens are. Yeah. Like, when you're playing a game <laughs> and you're having a hard time scoring the ball, when you have those, when you have those energy guys giving you those yeah. energy, it gives you a boost. And the other thing which I think is underrated, which no one has mentioned, shout out Rich Kleinman last year for saying that Knicks fans are the reason why the team has a hard time winning because we're so hard yeah. on the Knicks fan on, yeah. on mm-hmm. the team, right? Yeah, which means the we Knicks want players right that can now, play here. We want dogs. It's not for the faint right. of heart. It's not for the mm-hmm. weak. Period. Exactly. And right now, right now, the Knicks fans are giving the the Knicks a yeah. gigantic boost of energy right now. So Rich Kleinman. Yeah, whatever you say, bro. The reason why the Knicks are on a nine-game winning streak is not just because of Randall and Tibbs. It's because of the whole, the whole energy of the city, like yeah. the Knicks fans, the bench, like everybody. Tell me what player in the East period playing better than Julius the Black Messiah. No player in the Eastern Conference is playing better basketball and me more than Julius does to the Knicks. Than they own team. Nobody, ain't but one person out there in the Western Conference that's doing anything better than Julius. You know what I'm saying? And that's the Joker. You know what I'm saying? But he keep playing them games. I'm gonna bring Batman out. That's right. I said I'm gonna bring Batman out on Joker. You know what I'm saying? You keep playing them games, man. Stop playing with my man Julius. We already want Player of the Week. I need Player of the Month. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I need Most Improved Player. You know what I'm saying? I need First Team All NBA. You can't tell me four other people that's playing better than Julius on that First Team All NBA. And if you don't put him on that First Team NBA, then I understand. That's politics, but he better not be nothing worse than second, and we ain't trying to do no third team, you know what I'm saying? Give my man his props and his respect, man. I told y'all, ever since his little man was crying, you know what I'm saying? He was tearing up the league, man, setting it down completely, man, Chuck D style, you know what I'm saying? That's nine. That's that nine guard, you know what I'm saying? Just like R.J. Barrett today. That's what we did. And he put up big-time numbers, you know what I'm saying? You got to love and you got to respect what we're doing, man. If you don't love and respect what we're doing, you're not a real true New York nigga. Fan, because we don't came from the gutter, you know what I'm saying? Ain't a lot of people, a lot of teams, they can't bounce up like we had. They try to throw sand over, they try to throw concrete over, they try to put mud over the top of us, you know what I'm saying? They try to roll them construction trucks over, you know what I'm saying? They try to bury us like they had Superman on the ground, you know what I'm saying? But we back, man, and you gotta love and appreciate it, man, and respect how hard we worked, you know what I'm saying, to get to this point where we at, man. We did it the hard way, you know what I'm saying? Three the hard way, you know, style, you know what I'm saying? You gotta respect it, you gotta love it, man, you know what I'm saying? You feel me, you know what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody doing it no better, man. I'm amped up, man. I'm ready for Monday night, man. 
CP, I know you're ready for Let's Monday. Go. Let's go. But ain't no other team doing better than us, man. And we need coach of the year, you know what I'm saying? But Tom Thibodeau, C-O-T-Y, coach of the year, you know what I'm saying? Let's I don't do care it. about that man doing in Utah. He got an all-star network, you know what I'm saying? I don't care about that coach, what he's doing in Phoenix. He's supposed to be doing it. They had eight straight wins in the, in the bubble last year. Then they got CP, and they got a big domination, and they got a league score. We ain't had nobody over here. Two years don't know how to close game. He's just learning that right now. He ain't never closed games, you know what I'm saying? Seconds. In the NBA, you know what I'm saying? RJ just getting better. We ain't have nobody. All we got right now is a bunch of role players that should be coming off the bench and a bunch of rookies, you know what I'm saying? So tell me, what player in the league is doing better than Julius? Got all these monsters on his back doing what he got to do, you know? You got to love. You got to appreciate it, man. Let's go. This is real hardcore Nick Life, man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate the love, man. Five with us, man. Five with us, man. We going all out. It's the Luther James Dolan, man. He the top of the, you know what I'm saying, food chain, you know what I'm saying? And then you got the martyr, you know what I'm saying? How you do the blueprint to build a house, and then you lay down the martyr, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's um, Leon Rose. Then you put the semi blocks on top of the martyr. Guess who that? That's Tom Thibodeau. And then you put the bricks on top of the, the semi block. That's Julius Randle, RJ Black. Man, we building a house right here, man. We on right now. <laughs> 